Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs, and today I have this vibrant fall card to share with you. So let's jump right in. I am going to create a five by seven card, so I do have to cut down my base for that. So I'm going to cut a piece of cardstock down to 10 by seven inches so that I can score it at the five inch mark. I have found this the easiest way for me to make my five by seven bases, but I'm sure that there are other ways to do it. This is just kind of what I've been doing. And then I also cut down a panel of my hammer mill because that's what I want to blend on. And I cut that down to the full five by seven front size. And then I'm gonna score at that five inch mark and you can see here, this is where I'm gonna create my five by seven card. I do like this little scoreboard. You could use a bigger one, it would make this probably slightly easier, but I just, I love this small scoreboard so I tend to use it just cause it's so compact and easy to use. And then I'm gonna bring in my deco edge trimmer and I used this just to take off, it was maybe an eighth of an inch, uh, just to give it a little bit of a deckled edge. I originally thought that I would do the leaves in gold and I was going to give the card a, like this front panel a gold edge um, but in the end I chose to go white instead of gold in the embossing. You'll see here as we get into it but um, I opted to do something white instead so that is kind of why I gave it this deckled edge that's kind of thin because originally I in had intended to edge it with some gold ink, but I did not do that. And then as for my distress ink colors, I kind of chose what I feel is my favorite fall palette. Um, you could of course go a darker purple than the Seedless Preserves. It's just that I like that kind of pinky purple, um, but you could go in a different, like a darker, like Dusty Concord would be a beautiful one as well. But I used uh, Seedless Preserves, Faded Jeans, Pine Needles, Fossilized Amber, and Ripe Persimmon. And I kind of felt like that was a pretty fitting color palette to work with for this. Um, I, I just love how it turned out. I thought it was really pretty. But of course, you could use any color palette. I just, I realized that I had not used my uh, Tim Holtz Sketchy Leaves stamps yet. And I, I really wanted to get at least one more fall card in before it started snowing so that I could kind of enjoy those vibrant fall colors once more before it kind of was over. So it's kind of why I made this card specifically and why you guys are getting it today. I did ponder doing a Halloween card because it was Halloween two days ago. Um, but I opted to do fall instead just because I felt more of the fall vibe at the moment and because I really wanted to use these leaves. So there's no rhyme or reason to this pattern. I just laid down some color because I thought it would look pretty. Um, we're going to like emboss over it so it doesn't really matter but I mean, you could do more of a rainbow look or however you want to do the ink blending. This is just kind of what I went with because I thought that it was quite fitting and pretty. But again, however you want to do it, uh, this is just what I came up with. And I am heat setting it because I want to emboss on it. And I was worried that the embossing ink or the embossing powder would get stuck everywhere because this ink was still wet. So I heat embossed it and then I double checked that it was okay to, to start stamping on. So that's kind of my thought there. That's why you saw me dry it and then test my powder just to make sure that I have would have no issues with the stamping. So the sketchy leaves set, which is what you see on these acrylic blocks, there is five larger leaves in this set and I'm only going to use those leaves. I did consider bringing in different leaves, but I chose to only go with these five because I wanted to leave some open space for the color to shine through, but also because I really wanted to be able to bring in some pearls. <laughs> you guys know that I love my pearls. I love them so, so much. And I love them as like a detail layer in something that has a little bit of open space. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to stamp each one of these leaves, trying to give it a different angle. There is open space in the background, but I wanted that intentionally because I wanted there to be more of the color showing through. So it's kind of what I was thinking. And I, you know, just stamped my leaves. I tried to make them kind of go a different direction so there was more interest. I do wish I had flipped this one around. I realized that this one and the other bottom one are kind of going the same direction. I didn't realize that when I stamped it but I did realize it right afterwards and I was a little little bummed about that but that's okay. And then here's where I decided to go white instead of gold. You could absolutely go gold still. I think it would still look stunning. I just chose to go white because I actually had used gold on my last um, 
white and gold leaf card um i did a bronze not very long ago so i kind of had already done some metallics so i opted to actually just go white in not bring in another color and of course there's a cat hair right there that i'm just trying to get out um and yeah so that's kind of why i ended up going white you could still go gold you could go bronze you could go silver you could do so many things with this design that i think would look really stunning i just i opted to go white because i thought that they would really pop as well and my husband thought that it white would look really good so because i I was having a little conundrum as to what color I wanted to actually do but in the end I did choose to go white and of course the maple leaf gets front and center uh, as it always does when a stamp set has a maple leaf you guys know if you've been with me for a minute I am Canadian uh, and so maple leaves just have like a special place in my heart um, so I do tend to make sure that they're like front and center when I do cards like this um, but that's just kind of my my preference for that but you I mean you could put any one of them front and center it's also the largest leaf in the set so that kind of even gives it more of uh of like an area to cover so kind of ends up covering the most but completely up to you this is just kind of what I lean towards and then I wanted my leaves to be able to stand against the background so here I'm just going in with my Copic marker be aware that you shouldn't really use a Copic marker on top of oxide ink I do because I'm of the opinion that I own them and I want to use them how I want to use them but by all means if you're at all concerned don't um, for me personally I have no issue just changing the tip if I ruin it um, and I also used a color that I don't generally grab. This is an N6 and I don't usually use it. That's a neutral gray. And I tend towards the like one, three and five when I'm doing shading. So I pretty much never use this, this marker. But for me personally, I would honestly just, um, I would just change it you know, change the tip if I had actually ruined it. I hadn't ruined it. Like there's no problem. I don't really go over top of the uh, embossing powder. So it's not really damaging the nib. Um, I'm trying really hard to stay just right beside the embossing powder. Of course, there are areas where I touched it just lightly, but just be aware that, you know, you could potentially damage the tip of your marker. Um, but they sell replacement nibs. So for me personally, I just want to use my products however I want to use them. As you know, you pay for them. So so I chose to do this. By no means do you need to do this. This is honestly, it kind of creates a shadow and gives the leaves a little more de depth, which is kind of what I was going for. Totally not necessary, however, so completely up to you. But I like this step. I think it just adds a little bit of something with the leaves. And then, of course, I had to add some splatter in the background. I love how that looks. So I do tend towards it. Again, not necessary. It's just something that I love. And my Perfect Pearls is almost completely empty at this point. So I'm struggling even to get some splatter out of it I will have to mix up a new one and I did tell you guys that I would do like a little short or something doing that so that you guys could see how it was done I have had some questions in the past about how much powder I put in how much water so on and so forth so we will do that here pretty quick and refill it and then for my sentiment I went back and forth and in the end I chose to just die cut this little circle I'm going to stamp one of the stamps from Tim Holtz noteworthy set um, and I believe this one just says collect beautiful moments I just think that that's pretty fitting for a Feb like a fall card I almost said February card I don't know why uh pretty fitting for a fall card because I think that autumn fall is just my favorite season I I mean all of them have something very beautiful to offer it's just that this one just I just love fall and I think that collecting you know people collect leaves and they collect you know pictures of of beautiful leaves changing and whatnot and I just think it's a great kind of sentiment to go with this I did choose to stamp it in that um seedless preserves and then I'm going to coat the outside in seedless preserves embossing glaze so that I had that really pretty color and you know what honestly the oxide stamped sentiment dried in the time that it took me to get my VersaFine out or sorry my Versa mark and do the edging so it's kind of funny so it actually was not covered in any of the the glaze it's just the color of the actual ink but that's okay because it's the same color so it works regardless and then I did splatter just a tiny bit of that Perfect Pearls on top of the sentiment as well, just to kind of have it match the background. And then to adhere this, I chose to go with some foam tape. I wanted a little more dimension. This is a fairly, I mean, I mean, for me, it's simple. 
I know that that definition can be a bit different for people because simple is very, it depends on your style as to what you would deem simple. But for me, this was a fairly straightforward and simple card. Uh, we just did a little ink blending, a little embossing, and then, you know, the card's fairly finished by that stage. So for me, this is kind of a simple card. And when I do more simple designs, I do like to add more dimension to them. I think that that just gives it a little bit of something extra. And I think that that just kind of helps the the background or like whatever the the panel is stand up on its own and look a little more interesting so this is that big mama foam tape that i love because it's just super super thin uh, you get a ton of it you saw that roll and i've had that roll now for ooh, two years i don't know it's the same roll i originally purchased i could go and actually find that out but i purchased that roll quite a while ago and i'm still using it i actually bought a new roll recently when um the stamp timber because they had a sale on shipping right or they had a sale they had a deal on shipping so i actually bought another roll just because i got cheaper shipping so I, i'm nowhere near needing it but when i do need it i'll have it so that's perfect in my opinion but I kind of like to take advantage of that when I can. And to add a little more interest, I did bring in some white thread. I kind of struggled to get this to lay down how I wanted it to because the circle was just a touch bigger than I thought it was, I guess. So when I kind of, you know, rolled it around here and laid it down and I kind of got it to look kind of how I wanted, you wouldn't have seen any of it because the circle was bigger than the amount of of like thread that I had there. So you actually wouldn't have seen any of the thread. So I kind of had to finagle this a bit until I was happy. And then I, you know what, honestly, it's kind of, it's just an extra added thing. Like you don't need it. I was just kind of trying to add a little more interest to what I deem as a bit of a simple card. Uh, so I did actually have to pick it up. And then I, now I'm just going to like lay it generally in the area of where I want that uh, sentiment to go so that there's some interest behind that sentiment um, but I did kind of leave that one area a little more blank in the bottom right hand corner there because I knew my sentiment was going to go there so it's kind of what I was thinking and then I just kind of it stuck it down with the foam tape that I have on the back of the sentiment and I think that turned out really pretty it's not easy to see um, on camera but in person I, li I like that that little thread adds just a little bit more interest to the card and then of course you guys know I had to add some pearls <laughs> I love pearls I know you guys know this because I say it all the time but it just I don't know it dresses up a card like it just I don't know pearls have always had a special place in my heart I love pearls so to add them on a card it always just kind of makes me smile and I love the look you could add anything you wanted there sequins embellishments whatever but I just wanted to fill a little bit of that extra space with those pearls so that is the card I have for you guys today I hope you enjoyed it I'd love to hear what you think of it um is it fall where you are or do you already have snow I know some people have snow already we are apparently supposed to have snow fairly soon here so I guess we'll see when that happens but so far no snow yet <laughs> that is the card I have for you guys I hope you enjoyed it leave me a like leave me a comment and consider subscribing if you haven't already I do new videos every Monday and Thursday and of course as you guys know Mondays currently are Christmas thank you so much guys and I will see you again very soon bye bye for now